Uh, hey everyone, uh, welcome to Design Day. We hope everyone is staying uh, healthy, staying safe. Uh, we are the Airbag Inflator Automated Test Setup Group, sponsored by AutoLeaf. Uh, my name is Khaled, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about, about our project. Uh, before I can begin speaking about our project, it's useful to first uh, explain what an airbag inflator is. Uh, an airbag inflator is the device that goes inside an airbag that causes it to be filled with air. So for our, an airbag inflator can come in many different shapes and forms. For our project, our airbag inflator was a cylindrical device that's, uh, that has uh, holes on the side and is filled with uh, gas generant tables. And you can see on the poster uh, cross section of the inflator and you can see the gas generant tab tablets inside. So the way uh, the inflator works is it ignites the gas generator tablets, causing gas to escape out of the holes. And uh, AutoLeave, the company that sponsors this project, uh, is a company that makes these airbag inflators. And uh, as part of their safety factor testing, they have to uh, manually insert screws into the diffuser holes on the sides of the inflator. And uh, that poses a very minimum risk to the technician that's doing the insertion. So AutoLeave wanted to uh, automate the process of plugging the holes. So that's where we come in. Uh, our project was to design an automated test fixture that automatically plugs all the holes on the side of the inflator without the need for any technician interaction whatsoever. That way eliminating the risk. So as part of our design process, we had to come up with a few metrics to fit within the constraints of our project. The first metric was obviously how many holes we wanted to fill. Ideally, we wanted to fill six plugged holes representing one row on the inflator casing. Uh, the second metric was precision. Uh, we decided to use set screws for plugging the holes and we determined that in order for set screws to work, we had to align them within 0.5 millimeters of the center of the hole. And we did end up aligning them within 0.26 millimeters. Uh, the third metric was size. We wanted the size of our uh, fixture to fit within the testing, uh, the testing chamber inside the Autoly facility. The fourth metric was uh, our drill travel. So with using set screws, we had to come up with a way of uh, reloading the screws uh, and we decided to use a magazine style reloader. Uh, so with our magazine style design, we determined that we needed at least one inch of drill travel to ensure that the screw uh, properly goes into the inflator hole. With those metrics in mind, uh, we were ready to begin the design process and my friend Logan is gonna tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so as Claude said, most importantly, our design needs to eliminate the technician interaction with the actual inflator. In order to do that, we chose to use a drill motor that drives a screw through the screw reloader and pushes it into the inflator. The inflator is then clamped into a larger vice style fixture that holds it in place and that clamp is then coupled to our stepper motor below, which rotates the inflator, allowing us to insert screws into all six holes around the inflator casing. Um, initially, first semester, we spent a lot of time figuring out how exactly we wanted to plug the holes. Uh, we examined metal epoxies, rivets, most importantly, screws. And at the end of the day, we knew that AutoLeave had been using set screws previously, and that method was tried and true. So we decided to stick with the screw insertion method. We were able to find a screw diameter and thread pitch that could self tap itself into the inflator casing. So with that in mind, we were able to perform some preliminary torque value testing to figure out how much torque was required to insert the screws. With that value in mind, we chose a drill motor that was capable of torquing the screws in. And then we were able to focus a lot of time at the end of the first semester on the screw reloader itself. 
as Colette mentioned, we ended up choosing a magazine style design. The screws are all stacked on top of each other inside that screw reloader. Uh, and the drill can drive the bit back and forth through that reloader, pushing a new screw out every time, allowing us to have six screws inserted into the inflator itself. And then once we moved towards the start of second semester and had proven that our drill and screw reloader worked in tandem, we spent a lot of time designing our super robust uh, kind of bowl style clamping fixture that acts as a vise using four bolts to clamp around the uh, inflator flange in order to hold it in place. That allows us to rotate it. And most importantly, the kind of two halves create a bowl beneath it. And when we do set off the inflator and run a test, any debris would be caught and contained within that container. It also has exhaust ports. As Khaled said, the gas generate tablets produce air, and those ha airs have to escape beneath as well. Um, then we can move on to the axle design. The axle uses an upper and lower half that house angular contact bearings. We decided to use angular contact bearings for more torsional rigidity. Uh, we know that there are going to be a lot of forces applied downwards when the airbag inflator is actually tested. So we created a really robust axle that uses a shoulder bolt in order to decouple those downward forces and eliminate any sort of coupling of forces to the stepper motor. Um, because of that and because these axle and clamp designs have to be extra rigid, we wanted to perform a little extra analysis. And Kristen's going to tell you about that now. All right. So um, one of the biggest factors we wanted to analyze was our inflator holder itself. Um, we performed a finite element analysis on the holder as well as the bottom supporting frame. They're made of steel for our project to be robust, um, but we wanted to make sure that when the inflator is tested and um, it fails, we wanted to make sure that our holder was capable of supporting these uh, loads. So two important results came from our finite element analysis. The first was that the maximum stress was occurring inside the bolt holes of our inflator holder. So this was providing us a safety factor of two, um, which we justified because our loads that we were modeling were considered upper estimates, as well as that the um, location of the maximum stress did not affect any of the other components of our design. Um, but the more important result that we had was that the stresses on the bottom of the plate were not significant and they were very minimal. So this will, although we had the axle with the contact bearings to prevent any loads from um, transmitting to the stepper motor, this also just ensured us that we weren't going to damage the motor after repeated testing. Um, so once we had conducted the FEA, we also wanted to make sure that the clamping force would hold our inflator in place. So we verified that the clamping force would provide a torque that counteracted um, the screw insertion. And so we were confident in our inflator holder design and we moved on to some stepper motor analysis. So our initial prototype had used a um, motor donated to us by Autoleave, but during our test, we realized we needed a motor with finer resolution as well as higher torque. So we were able to find motors that had 400 step per revolution um, resolution. And so using that, we also decided we wanted to move from one inflator hole to the next in one second. With these um, values, we were able to look at a velocity profile curve um, in the bottom of the, of the section. And the lighter colored line would indicate an instantaneous acceleration profile but that's not realistic. So um, the darker curve shows a 0.25 second acceleration and deceleration period. In order to get from one hole to the next, we had to increase the velocity then, and um, that gave us an angular acceleration of 5.6 radians per second squared, which would help us calculate torque because we were able to find the moment of inertia from SolidWorks of the inflator holder that it would be rotating. 
And so then the torque, which would be equal to the moment of inertia times the acceleration, provided us a value of 1.8 newton meters of torque to rotate our inflator holder. With that, we were able to determine um, what motor we wanted, and we just also performed a verification that the um, holding torque would be sufficient if our screw was inserted slightly off-centered of the hole. That did um, determine that the maximum torque from our screw insertion was less than our holding torque. So we were confident with our design and we were able to move on to prototyping it, which Martin will discuss with us. Yeah, so my teammates have done a good job of documenting the design process and the story of how our design unfolded. And in a lot of ways, the testing is a mirror of that because every step of the way we were verifying first values that we needed and then that our designs worked. So as Logan mentioned, the first part of it, we just had to figure out what the torque values were for inserting, inserting the screws. And we used a torque meter and inserted screws by hands to get our values. And then from that, we could order our drill. And there was another set of testing to make sure that the drill we ordered actually worked. We were very happy when it did. And we then incorporated that along with our screw reloader design, once again, testing that. That brought us through the, the first semester. And then our second semester, obviously, the big design part was our axle design and our inflator holder. So for our midterm prototype, we came up with our first full prototype. It was made out of plywood and 3D printed parts, mostly, except for the axle design that had our full, our full parts. Um, so part of that testing, the first part was to see if it had the clamping force necessary to withstand the drill insertion, which it did. But then when we were testing the rotation of our um, inflator, we found that we didn't have the accuracy or the precision we desired um, with the current stepper motor we were using. And also after having done our motor selection uh, curve tests, we knew that it wouldn't have the necessary power for a metal inflator holder as it's quite a heavy uh, part with a large moment of inertia. So it was good that we did those tests so we knew exactly what we needed and we could upgrade to a 400 step motor. And then we were also getting some slip in between our shaft coupling, which clamped onto the bottom of the um, axle bolt and the top of the um, stepper motor shaft. But luckily Logan found a uh, two thousandths of an inch thick uh, steel tape that we could tape around the bottom of the bolt where the slip was occurring and that allowed us to get the friction necessary to then avoid slip with our final design. Um, so then we were planning to have all our parts, we were still confident in that our design would work, so we planned to have our parts manufactured by the uh, week after spring break. And then the time frame started getting a little weird as the school was shut down. But fortunately, we had already ordered some parts from AutoLeave, and then they were very helpful in us getting the last parts that we had intended to machine at the school done through. So that our last meeting was the week after spring break, and it was kind of a mad scramble because we didn't want to meet too often. But we got it built, and then we sent it off with one of our teammates to get the last fine tuning that we would intended to do as a group. But it kind of only one person could really physically see all the the small parts that were getting done. But we can show you what that final testing looked like. And uh, here we have a video of it. And uh, happy to say that it worked. We got six uh, screws inserted, meeting our metric. Uh, you can see the process here. It locates the hole. These um, locations are hard coded. It drills in for eight seconds, moving the drill. And then it moves the drill off for a tenth of a second, which releases the torsional tension in the bit, allowing it to pull back and then the process repeats itself. We sped it up just so that it fits into our presentation a little better, but it, um, the whole process of once it starts moving is just under two minutes. Um, we did encounter a slight problem. The inflator um, is off its axis by about less than an eighth of an inch, but that causes some difference in the whole uh, spacing and also the, um, tolerances between the holes weren't quite we, what we expected so something we had to add to our technicians process before it is to rotate through once typing in the values between the holes to figure out what the distances are um, so we encountered this late later on but we also came up with a 
solution to locating these holes, which is a contact sensor, which you can see running on the screen now. And it is pressed up against the inflator and then goes into the hole when it passes the contact. And then we know the distance from the hole to the drill bit. So this is a possible solution that um, we would have liked to work on if we had more time to, to um, manufacture a part that would also interact with our screw reloader because the screw reloader got a little in the way with the way we had it designed there. But overall, um, our design worked as we said. If, when we knew the hole geometries, we could auto autonomously plug an entire row of holes. And we believe that AutoLeave can go and do this test in less than 10 minutes with an inflator programming the whole um, distances and then uh, setting the inflator in the chamber and removing themselves. So uh, we're quite pleased. It was an enjoyable project to work on. We'd like to thank AutoLeave for donating their time, their expertise, and all the com many of the components that we used. Um, it was really nice working with them and also to all our advisors at the U for helping us along as well.